It's no secret that I love secondhand shopping. I've talked about it a lot on the channel. But today I wanted to share some tips and things that I think everyone should know about secondhand shopping that aren't necessarily often shared. The global secondhand apparel market is set to grow three times faster than the apparel market overall. This is fantastic news. Increasing the longevity of our clothes also comes down to how we care for them. And this plays into the resale and secondhand market as well. So that's why today's video sponsor, True Earth, is a fantastic partner for today. I'm excited to share more uh, about True Earth a little later in this video, but for now, let's jump on into some of these tips. All right, the first thing that I think nobody tells you about secondhand shopping is that it requires patience and persistence. I know there's like a thousand videos on the internet or TikToks or whatever content you consume showing that people find like these incredible things at their local thrift or vintage or consignment store and they make it look as though like it just jumped off the rack and like onto their body and fit perfectly and all these wonderful things. But let me tell you, at least in my experience, <laughs> A solid, successful secondhand find has taken a little bit of time, a little bit of digging, some research, so a lot of patience, and also persistence. I've had to go back to the same store over and over again. I've had to put, you know, alerts on my online thrifting or secondhand uh, stores that I like to frequent. While online stores can be really, really easy for this because of all the filters and the fact that the inventory is practically organized for you, I do think a lot of people get turned off from secondhand shopping because there's this like myth on the internet that that makes you think you're gonna like find your dream top in an instant. Let's talk about sizing because it's totally completely random and all over the place with secondhand shopping. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos that I always shop with a measuring tape specifically or particularly when I am secondhand shopping. There is such a wide range of decades and eras as well as brands from all over the world that you're going to find when you are shopping secondhand. So it's really important that if you pick up a piece that you love and it doesn't happen to be in whatever your traditional size is, give it a try anyway, or at least measure, if you've got your little measuring tape, give it a quick measure if it's a top or a blazer, shoulder to shoulder and under the bust line. I always find those are like from like armpit to armpit at the seams. Um, those are always the easiest places to just measure to get a quick gauge of whether it'll fit you. I think it's important to look outside of your traditional size range. Now this of course does depend on, you know, the amount of inventory that I'm looking at. In the plus size community, there isn't always a lot of offering. Oftentimes people will just put things back all over the store. So you might find your size where it doesn't really belong. And also people will hide things when they secondhand shop. So, you know, just like do a little digging. My next tip is about how we contribute to the resale market. Less than 20% of what gets donated actually gets sold. A lot of times what gets donated is unsellable, whether it's ripped or stained or just unwearable. And we kind of leave these things up to these charity shops to handle. So keeping our clothes in really, really good condition from the beginning is the best mitigator to that excess waste of clothing and all of that unwearable apparel that really wreaks havoc on the secondhand market. So to stop the cycle of overconsumption and to be a healthy participant in the resale market and secondhand industry, it's about being mindful at every step of the consumption cycle, not just the end. So this means taking really good care of your clothes from the beginning. And that's what brings me to today's video sponsor, True Earth. If you've been around here for like more than a minute, then you know I've partnered with True Earth before, and that is because I use True Earth Eco Strips to wash my clothes. I prefer these to traditional laundry detergents because they are gentler on my clothes with less harsh chemicals, but they still give my clothes a really good, fresh clean. When it comes to vintage and secondhand items, I'll usually soak them first in like a vinegar and baking soda bath, and then I'll throw them in the laundry with my True Earth Eco Strips. And I recently used their newest scent, which is Lilac Breeze, 
smells so good, on a pair of vintage Levi's jeans, which I picked up at a secondhand market. They have just come out with Lilac Breeze. It's not too floral either. Like it has, it still has that kind of fresh laundry smell, which I really like. I especially love having a scent like this for my secondhand items. These eco strips are so easy to pack and store. There's no plastic, which makes me really happy. And since our washing machine here in Croatia is really small, I don't have to worry about wasting the strips because I can just rip one in half if I'm doing a small load. If you are looking for a detergent that is plastic free, gentler on your clothes, gentler on the planet, I would definitely give True Earth a try. And I have a discount code for you, which I will leave uh, in the description box below. Keep an open mind. This is one of my favorites, especially for people who are new to secondhand shopping. You know, you might walk into a secondhand store and not find anything at all, and that's totally okay. You might walk into a secondhand shop and find that there's nowhere to change except for in a basement that is like full of old, perhaps unusable appliances and weird, weird little knickknacks, and that's okay too. I think that's part of the fun of secondhand shopping. It can be a little bit unconventional. The whole point is to just at least give these things a try. That way you can really get the most out of secondhand shopping. The other part about being open-minded with secondhand shopping is that, you know, not everything will fit you right off the rack. This is typical with regular retail shopping as well. So I think it's really important to remember that, you know, when you try something on, it might require some adjustments. It might require a trip to the dry cleaner or you spending a little bit of time on it, getting stains out, and that's okay too. And in complete contradiction to my last point, it's really important to also have a focus when you're shopping secondhand. So yes, it's like be open-minded, but also be laser focused. I, I don't know. I try and do both because they're a little bit different. So when I say be focused, like all shopping endeavors, I think it's important to at least have an idea of what you want. Prices are often so low. The inventory selection is often, you know, so abundant and so eccentric and different and like, cool, you can kind of get sucked into overconsumption through secondhand shopping, but overconsumption is overconsumption. So understanding what it is you need and want in your closet, I think is still very important when you're secondhand shopping. If you're secondhand shopping and a piece that is not on your list or anything like that pops out at you and it's like a coup de foudre and you have to have it this does often happen with secondhand shopping. So I think in order to kind of curb overconsumption or make sure you're gonna make a mindful purchase here in that case, I would double check that there are elements that work within your closet that are present in this piece. So looking at your three words that you use to describe your style, are they present in this garment or is this just like totally wild and you just got carried away? Look at your lifestyle. Is it realistic? Does it suit that? And I would even take like a mental picture of your closet. And if you added that garment in amongst it, would it stand out? My last point is that not all secondhand shopping experiences are created equal, especially as the retail market is growing in popularity and size. There are many different levels of curation. The price will often reflect the level of curation and the level of refurbishment that goes into the clothing themselves. Typically vintage shops and consignment shops will have higher price points simply because it takes a lot longer to choose your clientele, find your inventory, refurbish it. Some consignment boutiques will take care of dry cleaning costs and they also have to pay out their vendor. I think it's important to, you know, know what kind of secondhand shopping experience you're going into so that you can manage your expectations. That is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Thank you so, so much again to True Earth for sponsoring today's video. I just, I say this every time, but like, I really like this company. I love washing my clothes with True Earth. Um, I'll leave that discount code for you in the description box. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful week ahead. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. It really does mean a lot. And I will see you in the next slow fashion video. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Ciao.